So what would you have thought? What would you have made of it all? The first Easter morning, that is. How would you have understood it all? We've all been at that place where we were expecting one thing only to get another. We've all been at that place. Isn't it true that in so many of the stories Jesus told, it was the unexpected, the unanticipated, the surprise ending that captured people's hearts. Like the shepherd who left the 99 sheep safe in the fold to search for the one that was lost, and in finding it, rejoiced. Like the father whose son had left and in leaving had wasted everything he had, but who later came home, tail between his legs, broken and humbled, expecting the worst, but receiving the best. His father's loving welcome for his boy who was lost, but was now found. Who was dead, but was now alive. Like the broken who came to Jesus only to be mended. And the weary only to be revived. The sinners only to be forgiven. Like the disciples, twelve, ordinary, everyday, unexceptional men, whom the most extraordinary, eternal, exceptional man called to follow him. Because he saw in them more than meets the eye because he saw in them what they could not see. Glorious possibilities for good and for God. Expecting one thing, getting another. But that morning, that morning when those who went to the tomb expecting to find a body, when those who were there found nothing, expecting one thing and getting another. What would you have thought had you been there? What would you have done had you been there? Those who greeted that unexpected moment were reminded that Jesus had said, I will rise. And in time, not right away perhaps, and certainly not easily, they came to understand and believe that it is Jesus rising that would change everything. And this is what I believe. And I believe this with all my heart. That whenever a heart is given to him, whenever a life yields to him, that person in Christ rises. That person in Christ is resurrected from spiritual death. That's what I believe. We don't have to wait until we die to gain a sense of resurrection. We don't have to wait for our end. Today, right now, even as I speak, we can find resurrection and life in him. Because the Easter faith is a faith that is intended for every day. It's not a one-up. 
or at the very least once a year. It's an everyday type of thing. A little girl was once standing on the edge of a crowd while her daddy was giving a testimony about what Jesus Christ had done in his life. He was testifying how the Lord had saved him and delivered him from his old lifestyle as a drunkard. There was a cynic standing on the edge of the crowd that day who could not bear to hear any more of this religious malarkey, this nonsense. So he yelled, Why don't you shut up and sit down, old man? You're just dreaming. Soon, uh, this skeptic felt a little tug on his shoulder, on his coat sleeve. He looked down, and it was the little girl. She looked him square in the eye and said, Sir, that's my daddy you're talking about. You say that my daddy is a dreamer? Well, let me tell you about my daddy. My daddy used to be a drunk and would come home at night and beat my mother. She would cry all through the night. And mister, we didn't have good clothes to wear because my daddy spent all his money on whiskey. Sometimes I didn't even have shoes to wear to school. But look at these shoes. And look at this dress. My daddy has a good job now. Then pointing across the way, she said, Do you see that woman smiling over there? That's my mother. She doesn't cry through the night anymore. Now she sings. Then the knockout punch. She said, Jesus changed my dad. Jesus changed our home. And mister, if my daddy is dreaming, then please don't wake him up. Here was a man who was able to rise. Rise above the missed moments and the messed up life. Rise above a life lost in itself. Rise to a life lost in love for his family. That's the power of God's love in Christ. Fallen, only to rise. Spiritually dead, only to be resurrected. Again, and again, and again, and again, if need be. We don't have to wait for the end. Today, right now, resurrection and life is found in him. Myra Welch wrote this beautiful poem on the subject. It's entitled, The Touch of the Master's Hand. And I'd like to read you the poem for you right now. Was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but held it up with a smile. What am I bidding, good folks? he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar, a dollar, then two, only two? Two dollars, and who'll make it three? 
three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three. But no, from the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loose strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as a caroling angel sings. The music ceased, and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, what am I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars? And who will make it two? Two thousand. And who will make it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, and going and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some of them cried, we do not understand. What changed its worth? Swift came the reply, the touch of a master. And many a man with life out of tune and battered and scarred with sin is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of potage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He is going once and going twice. He's going and almost gone. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. In moment after moment, in life after life, Jesus has risen again and again and again and again. And in his rising has brought people to that place called hope. Those who have lived hopeless lives and who thought there was no hope for them have been able to rise above it into a life filled with possibility. Those who have been defeated and who could not see a win in the fight that they were fighting have been able to rise again. Those who have been at a hard place, we've all been there, who couldn't see beyond that hard place, have been able to rise again. In life after life, I believe this. His life has made all the difference. Which is why I pray that on this day, may each of us, all of us together, Discover in the timeless Christ the power in our time to rise again. And may each of us, all of us, every one of us, discover in Christ who loves us all the love that changes everything. Now and forever. That's the glory of this Easter day. That's the glory of every day. Again and again and again. I pray that you're going to feel it. That, that glory, that love, that light is going to enter your life. Just grab hold of your heart. God be with you.